So, last time, we finally took down Lana Lay, but not before she set the satellite to superheat all of the materials under the water to cause a mass global pandemic. I had the music up way too loud, and it was just like staring at that dead body. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> That's, it's terrifying. You know, I think we can get through this if we just believe in our countries enough. Uh, agreed. I, yeah, you know, I think that their ability to handle um, not only like uh, sudden, but also like, uh, you know, climate based uh, catastrophe very well documented. Yeah, they yeah. shouldn't have sent in Nina Williams. They should have sent in the entire UN. Like <laughs> the hot, like the fucking hot weather is coming to kill you. Look that bitch straight in the eye. Put your hands on your chest and sing your national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we all hold hands. With your bathing shorts on, because it is very warm now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's nice, though. Yeah, exactly. Gotta make do with what you get. So, we stole Lucas's pocket watch off of his dead body, and that was very important because it's the key to turning off the satellite. So... What you need to do is that each of the, fa- you know, each of the, the hour bits on the clock uh, is a specific symbol. And you need to create the three symbols on the stopwatch in a certain amount of time in order to uh, turn off the satellite. Hey, Chirps, I have a question. Did every yes. terrorist organization just play Myst? Uh, yes. The... I was going to say, the, there's something about this that feels extremely like uh, one of the mini games in Final Fantasy VIII when you're trying to turn off the missile strike. Oh, uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little more simple. So wait, did you plug in the watch with USB? Yeah, uh, no, it just it just kind of stepped. It's like it's one of those things, you know how you put... Yeah, because you know how you like you put your phone on the charger and you don't have to push anything in it; it just charges off of the vibes. Oh, it's okay. like that. Self destruct sequence. Oh, also, it set up a self destruct sequence. <laughs> so we did a little mini game and caused Kessler syndrome. That's right. Activating emergency authorization. <laughs> well, we didn't do it, but someone did. Who could it be? Oh, I hope it's Lucas. I hope he's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was just pretending to be hung up and dead. So, uh, first things first, we got to get our final f- security access. Now we've got the yellow card. Now we can open up every door. I was really hoping you were going to say, we got to get our final fingerprints, but we got that last <laughs> episode. Yeah, unfortunately, we already got all the fingerprints and gold coins. They don't put them in the escape sequence. I think they're still Cowards. there if you want to try to run somewhere, but you will not make it. Anyways, there's a door there that we can take for a secret exit, but there's a little Easter egg if we go down the way we came. Wow. It takes a little bit longer, but we have plenty of time to kind of do this, at least on normal difficulty. At least if you do a jump cut. Yeah. They reduce the amount of time if you are on harder difficulties, but Edgar's body is gone. Where could it be? He only left his gun. Or one of them. Yeah. Could have left a cooler gun at the very least. Yeah. And you can see there's blood trail, so we'll follow that. But also there's a bunch of robots that we have to fight. This is what we saved the railgun for. During this escape sequence, it's just infinitely easier to not actually worry about or engage with any of the enemies (laughs) as it is. But you will... (laughs) You still have time to pick up the peppermints, of course. Well, yeah. Come on. I mean, that's the time he gets afforded by using the railgun. Yeah. Waste not once, not Jay. Uh, no, I think that's right. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I like to think but. it's like just like the regular like peppermints you get at like a restaurant. Like once you're done yeah. eating, no, the kinds that they leave on your pillow at a hotel, mm-hmm. or at the bottom of a bag out from a Sonic restaurant. Right. See, as you see, they just throw a thousand more robots at you, which is why we saved all our rail guns. Oh, yeah, I it can see that. Makes sense. All, like, the normal people would have run away by now. That's right. And speaking of running away, we find that the sub that we used to get down there initially is missing. Did Edgar take it? Who knows? But that's the that's the little Easter egg oh, that, that they have here. That's the Easter egg. 
Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks. That was worth it. <laughs> is that you? Is that they figure out where your body is? Yeah, no, it was worth using all of my railgun ammo. Yeah, uh, be in the lookout for Tekken's Nina Williams to the return of Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be a cool name. Yeah. They should put him in Tekken 8, and he still, like, trails blood behind him, and his uh, super is getting into a submarine, I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say, they put Edgar Rant in that game, that would rule. Like, his little throwback is just like, oh, it's been... Because this is pre-Tekken 1, so it's gotta have been at least, like, what, she was in cryostasis for, like, 20 years or something? Something like that. Enough for Steve Fox to become a grown boxer man. Wait. Yeah, so he's, like, an old man at this point. Wait, so this is before she was in cryostasis? Yeah, this is all pre-Tekken 1. This is before the first yeah. tournament happened. Oh, I thought oh. she was in cryostasis between Tekken 1 and 2. Yeah, and uh, also Anna Williams got so sad about her sister being in cryostasis for 15 years that she also did that. Right, it's solidarity. Yeah. Anyways, I stick around here a little longer than usual because I wanted the countdown to be able to play out, which just makes it shake. That doesn't actually do anything, but it does make four robots come and attack you. <laughs> so last time we were in here, this is where we got the key to all of the J robots. Um, there was a uh, capsule that we shot out that had a robot in it. If we hadn't done that before, we would need to do that now because this is our exit plan. Instead of exiting any other way. We're actually going to use a capsule to shoo ourselves out of the cruise ship. Cool. I mean, it's better than taking a lifeboat. I guess so. I mean, the, we turned. it turned out the lifeboat was also like a cannon, so probably there's not enough space for a person in it. Yeah, so we've, we've created an empty one many videos ago. Yeah, if you're, um, like, watching this in, like, 2025 and just, like, binging all the episodes, you're like, I know that! <laughs> yeah. This is so fucking cool! <laughs> right? It's so cool! <laughs> this is, like, the ultimate, like, Indiana Jones for, <laughs> like, escaping the nuke with the fridge. Yeah! No, you want to fall in the water. No, it's cold. I don't know, from that height? A helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, the helicopter, helicopter leaves. leaves. Yeah. It was all part of her elaborate ah, plan. This. Also, she's wearing Sonic the Hedgehog shoes. <laughs> well, yeah, otherwise how is she going to grind on all these rails? Mm -hmm. That was the ultimate prank. I mean, the whole, like, shoulder pauldron thing there really feels like some Xenogear shit. It's so cool. So, welcome to the final fight of Tech and Xena Williams in Death by Degrees. We face off against Anna once again, who, like last time, is a clone of us who can do all of our super moves but easier because she doesn't have to actually deal with the uh, mechanics of the game. Um, she has way more HP, she does way more damage, and there are environmental hazards in this. Like last time, you can um, fall over the side of the boat and fall into the water and die. Also, as you can see in the background, there are uh, barrels that shoot out of the fire and after a certain amount of time, we'll explode, doing a huge amount of damage to either you or Anna, depending on who's within range. Okay, but can you kick Anna off the boat? Um, I mean, you saw in the last episode, the last time we fought her, that she could fall off the bridge. It's likely that she could fall off of the ship as well. Okay, but you never tested it. Hmm, well, sa save it for later in the video. Hmm. Anyways, my, my general strategy with this is I try to stay as close to the um, the edge, like where the wall is, as possible, because it's much easier to see the barrels there, and you have way less of a chance of um, falling off. The problem is that uh, the camera gets really bad as soon as you're up against what it considers a solid object. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like, ultimately, it's probably better to kind of stay here in the middle, but it just... 
it just doesn't feel like you have as much um much opportunity to run away from a barrel depending on where they go or they're just more likely to hit you <laughs> there, you, there you can see it hitting Anna. The same thing happens to you if you get hit by it, but I would never. Right. You're a professional. That's right. It didn't really seem to do much, though. It doesn't do as much to her. It does a lot more to you. Yeah, weird. It is definitely just bonus damage, which absolutely I will take. Well, the thing is, like, Anna trained with a bunch of barrels and stuff. Right. <laughs> That's what they teach you at assassin school. Well, no, th this is just like signifying that they are like regressing to like childish squabbles. Ah, I see. It's true, just like sisterly rivalries. Yeah. <laughs> Anna's final move is going to be like swinging her arms wildly, and if you run into it, it's your fault. That's right. <laughs> This entire game is just a prequel to that one Tekken ending that's just one of them, uh, like, stealing the other one's shoes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, every third of her life bar that you take off, it will play a little cinematic. Just letting you know you're on a different stage. It doesn't change anything, you don't heal, nothing. Uh, it's just letting you know that you've made it to another stage of the fight. I don't think Anna changes either, she doesn't get, like, more aggressive or anything. Well, she unlocked her slap move. Right. Also, I didn't include the menuing in it, but I have, for the sake of trying to make this uh, fight go at a normal speed, I am full of essential oils, <laughs> and I refill at the each third of the fight. I was gonna ask, like, can't you, like, drink one of your, like, 27 different uh, bottled waters to get a bunch of uh, meter? Yeah, you could you could increase your focus meter by drinking water. You could eat during this to increase health. I'm just like, I I got it in my head that like showing off that you can do it without doing that is uh, more interesting than just like cheesing my way through any of these fights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I missed because she gets uh, uh, to the opposite side of me. I still hit, but it didn't do any of the cool animations. <laughs> so do like the. Like the the little colors under your bars, that means you you're all essential oiled up. Yeah, one of them is attack, one of them is defense, and one of them is speed. That means like you got like all the free samples at the Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, and at the Costco. Mm. <laughs> they let me drink the essential oils there to give them a shot. Nina Williams is so fucking basic; she doesn't even go to the Sephora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah. She like just walks straight past the bath, the uh, bath and body works. Yeah. So um, another thing about this fight, again, she, she has very similar attacks to you, or she has the same move set as you. You kind of find that ultimately, like, just kind of constantly attacking because attacking is also blocking. If you hit at the same time, um, is super effective unless she starts doing special moves at which point you need to be dodging out. So it's just a lot of moving. Um, it doesn't allow for a lot of space to just like constantly hit. Uh, you definitely have to be much more uh, aware of what uh, Anna is doing. So having all your moves actually makes her fairly weak. <laughs> uh, no, it makes her pretty tough. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> some of them do... A, a oh. nuts amount of damage. Oh, he did a Hadouken. That's right. All the Tekken characters can actually do projectile moves. They just refuse to do them during fighting game. Right, because of Bushido. Mm -hmm. Except for Law when he pulls his gun. <laughs> Was that ever actually real? Could he ever do that? I don't think he could. No, right? But also, like, Law is one of those guys that has, like, 200 moves, so yeah. he might as well. I mean, it's Tekken, they all do. <laughs> In, like, the later Tekkens, when you can, like, customize characters, you can, like, give them guns, and that'll give them a gun special move. That's true, you can gi give Geese Howard a gun. <laughs> That's fucked up. Geese doesn't need that a gun. That wrong. I love... Just Akuma with a shotgun. It's so cool. Yeah. 
god, imagine doing like the fucking demon rush, but you just had a shotgun cupped in your hands. You would be the coolest motherfucker alive. I was just imagining Akuma doing the fucking Saijima uh, hunting uh, minigame. You know, I could survive. <laughs> I think my go-to thing was just, like, Akuma, but wearing a t-shirt. Like, like something about that simplicity really tickled me. Akuma in a big dog shirt. I keep forgetting that Akuma was in the game, and I keep thinking you mean Kuma? Which also very cool. Yeah. Kuma would definitely have a gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Post this, motherfucker. Oh. Anyways, that's not canonically how this fight went. Canonically, this fight went much worse. <laughs> Um, I, I did this effectively when I came into this the first time, this was like a practice run. Didn't really expect to do it. Uh, Anna is very difficult, especially if you're not playing with the ability to just heal all the time. Mm -hmm. So it just, uh, it's a rough fight, especially if you just start losing ground a little bit, you start to lose it a lot more. <laughs> And things like that make it that much harder. Yeah, just like the, the barrels are random and will just get in your way most of the time. Can you use weapons on this fight, or is that not? Honorable? No, all of your weapons explode in the in the capsule. <laughs> but as you can see, some of the railing is gone. So, uh, as spoken before, there are ringouts in this. Ah, who but said if you that? just ricochet her off, that's the end of the fight. <laughs> oh no, you picked on her. <laughs> Anyways, either way, the, the final uh, cutscene is the same. Oh, so that just completely ends the fight. Yeah. The sun's gonna set soon. Let's move on. I've had enough. You're wasting my time. And then the zombies attacked. Hey, kids <laughs> stay, so don't push your luck, pal. This was his final lesson to his daughters. <laughs> you bastard! I don't... This is going to be your first confirmed kill, Nina. That's a lot of gun for, like, a seven-year-old to <laughs> pick up. Yeah. I certainly would have recommend, uh, wouldn't have recommended it, but, you know, that's why I don't run in a successful Irish assassin family. Mm -hmm. That's why Anna's the favorite. Oh, she lost all her fingers in the cold. <laughs> I will say, for as good as tech and graphics, I think, have consistently looked throughout this entire lifespan, not sure about the children tech. Yeah, it re looks really fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah. It feels like a really bad, like, poser model from, like, the mid-aughts. And, like, the way that they're just, like, motion-capped, like, they just, like, move really shaky. Well, maybe that's supposed to be them cold, but it just, like, looks really weird. Yeah. <laughs> if I were in the Arctic, I would simply wear a sweater. Anyways, that helicopter came back. It was just waiting. It was watching <laughs> the fight. They were taking bets. Yeah, I just wanted to make it more interesting. Yeah. This is actually a different helicopter. <laughs> Tekken's Nina Williams in Love by Degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Coast Guard's coming. They'll get her. <laughs> Look, they can't be seen holding hands. Otherwise, people might think the rivalry is dead when it's actually going to be alive for many more games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the most shark-infested part of the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be counting on you. Sweeper. 
And so, <laughs> that was the end of Tekken's Nina Williams in Death by Degrees for the PlayStation 2. Wow. Yeah. What an ending. What an ending, and what a game. What, what did we all think about this, uh, this soul... Uh, side game in a in the beloved Tekken fighting game series. Um, so I think I think this game was more interesting to me than it looked like a very good game, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, like it feels in a way like a weird sort of thing where they were trying to apply like how do I say it? Just a sort of weird, like, formula to the Metal Gear Solid slash action brawler shit and just kind of all melded it together and ended with kind of a weird mess. Not in a super bad way, but I don't know. I just think it's interesting way. Yeah. Definitely, I would say that it is a game that is, like, less than the sum of its parts, but I think that what it stands for is very interesting. I think that it has a lot of good ideas that just don't come together because of the way that they're implemented. It's a bit of like a vegetable medley, but there's like a whole duck and then a wrench also <laughs> inside of it. <laughs> right. It, it really feels, a, it very much reminds me of like a bygone era of this style of game existing. Like very much feeling like both as a way of spin-off games in an entirely different genre from the games that they are spun off from, but also games that very much feel like they are like very directly aping the style of another very popular game of that time. Like sure we have those these days also, but not at the same like level of budget and such. Yeah, this kind yeah. of like very specific spy thriller kind of game was really PS2 only. Yeah, it there are so many times throughout this game where I was just thinking about spy fiction, for example, which <laughs> also like this extremely similar style of game, like not gameplay wise, but the entire premise, basically. Like the PS2 really was the MGS console, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the sort of pseudo stealth mechanics, the like different ways that you can handle combat scenarios. It's like it's like halfway there, but like. You can't, like, stealth the game. It still requires yeah. you to fight all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, the stealth mechanics are so weird in this because it's not the core of the game, right? Like, right. The, the failure of, like, failing stealth is that you get to do the fights the game is mostly designed around. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the it's not even, like, a failure of stealth. It's, like, the game wants you to not be in stealth. It's not, yeah. like, a, a failure on your part. It's just the game playing as it's designed to be. Mm -hmm. But, I right. mean, that's why stealth is so weird, because it's yeah. a very all-encompassing, no, no, like, yeah. Yeah, it, it very much... It very much reminds one of how, like, this was very much the Tom Clancy era. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah. You had some terrorists, and they wanted to destroy the world, and you could never figure out why the fuck they wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole, whole lot of covert ops. They found a new way to destroy the world, and they thought, hey, let's give it a go. <laughs> yeah. But so, that's not the end of it. That may be the end of the story, but there's a lot of bonus stuff that we need to go over next time. <laughs>